Hello everyone and welcome back to Medso Medic. My name is Kitty and I'm an academic junior doctor working in the UK. Today we'll be continuing to talk about the Academic Foundation Program or AFP, specifically regarding the white space questions and how to write them. If you're unsure about what an AFP is or if you should apply, check out my other video that I did previously covering the Academic Foundation Program. In this video, we'll first recap what the AFP application process involves. Then we'll talk about what are white space questions and why they are important, followed by a general approach to writing white space questions. From there, we'll break down the different categories of questions there are and specific tips on how to answer each of them. Finally, we'll go over a good and bad example of a white space answer and some frequently asked questions and final tips. So first of all, recapping the AFP application process. You have your OREO application, which is made up of your EPM, which is otherwise your medical school ranking, your additional achievements, which are your additional degrees, publications, presentations and prizes, and your white space questions. A combination of these three things will get you shortlisted for an academic interview, and if you're successful, you then get an offer. So what are white space questions? Essentially, they are a personal statement. They allow you to discuss why you want to do an AFP, to elaborate on your impressive achievements, outline achievements that are maybe not as concrete as the one listed on your OREO application, and to demonstrate commitment and transferable skills that you can apply to your academic post. Most importantly, white space questions are key to securing an interview for the AFP. It is important to note that white space questions are scored differently depending on the deanery that you are applying to. There are no white space questions at all in London, and in some other deaneries they are weighted very heavily. Looking at this example scoring criteria from a particular deanery in previous years, you can see that the educational decile ranking actually doesn't come into it at all, although this again varies by deanery. Of the additional educational achievements, you can score up to 250 points, uh, consisting of the following. You can get a maximum 10 points for a PhD, 7 points for an international oral presentation, for which you can put up to a maximum of 10, 7 points for any first author original research, again you can put up to 10, and up to 10 prizes with an international prize scoring 10 points. White space questions, of which there are three for this particular deanery, will score up to 22 points. Looking at this in the table, initially you might think that 22 points is not a lot in 250. However, if you take into account that the majority of people will not be scoring full for this criteria, you can see that white space questions are actually worth quite a lot. They're worth more than two PhDs, they're worth more than three international oral presentations, three first author publications, and more than two international prizes. So you should consider this when you are picking a deanery to apply to. If you're not as strong in the numbers game as they say, then you can actually make up for a lot of the points in your Whitespace questions. The Whitespace questions are published every year on the UK FPO website from sort of September time. If you're applying this year as a final year student, I hope you've already seen them and started drafting some ideas. If you're a penultimate year student who is sure that you're going to apply to AFP, I would say that actually you should start preparing now, because the questions actually rarely change every year, and if you have an idea of where to start, it will make your job that much easier when you're applying, especially as the application for AFP comes very close to the final exams time for a lot of medical students, so you really don't want to have to stress about two things at once. In general, white space questions are split into the following categories. Personal and career aspiration, research experience, education experience, leadership experience, and non-academic achievements. We'll go through all of these categories in detail in a moment. So what general approach should you take when you're writing a white space question? Some key points to remember is to always read the personal specification for that deanery. Although the majority of them might be vague descriptions of the ideal candidate, sometimes they do state particular qualities or characteristics they want their candidates to have, and you want to come across as someone who's done their homework. Second of all, make sure you're actually answering the question. If the white space question asks you to list one example of your academic achievements, even if you publish 10 papers, only describe the most impressive one because you will not score any points for the other ones that you list and you actually risk losing points for not describing one of them in detail. You need to write confidently and be proud of the achievements that you've got. Each white space question is only 200 words long so make sure that you write in a way that is structured and concise. You also want to be as personal and specific as possible in your answers and avoid making any generic statements that can be applied to anyone else. And finally and possibly most importantly, Make sure to ask for feedback from as many people as you can 
just to make sure that your application flows. The key things that you want to get across in your application is your best and most important achievements. You also want to mention anything with several key skills and anything that's not listed in your main or your application. For example, if you've done a really impressive audit, but it doesn't fit into a publication or presentation or a prize. You want to put yourself forth as a well-rounded candidate with commitment to your specialty of interest and potential to be a good researcher, educator and leader with an understanding of the real world of academia. The key things to avoid on your white space questions include generic statements that can be applied to anyone else, so don't say things like I am very organised without backing it up with evidence. Do not start writing lists in your white space questions without inferring explicitly the transferable skills that you have gained. And of course, it goes without saying that you shouldn't list anything that you aren't willing to discuss at interview or anything that you can't back up with evidence, and of course, don't lie on your application. Before you start, you should make a list of achievements that you want to mention on your application. You should prioritise and rank them based on the significance to your application and match them to a white space question. Ideally, you would want to avoid using one achievement more than once if you can help it. After this, you then want to identify the key skills that you want to mention in your application and again link these to the achievements that you've already ranked and prioritised. And finally, you should do some background research and homework on the deanery that you're applying to. Are there any unique courses or opportunities that you can do there that aren't available anywhere else in the country? This will make your application to that deanery much more unique compared to generic statements about why you want to do an AFB. An example structure you can use with your white space questions is something called the sandwich approach. Essentially, you start with one concise sentence that answers the question. Then you want to back it up with evidence by describing your achievement, covering the outputs that you gained from this achievement such as prizes, publications or presentations, describe what exactly did you do and what your role was in this achievement, explicitly state what skills you gained from this, and if you can, include a bit of reflection to show that you have progressed. Finally, I'd like to end my answers with one or two sentences about why this makes you a good candidate for a particular AFP program. Here are some buzzwords that you can use on your application that demonstrates the characteristics that they're looking for in a good AFP candidate. In my application, I also stress something called the CanMeds model, which essentially covers the facets of being a medical expert. This includes being a good communicator, collaborator, leader, professional, academic, and health advocate. Now we're going to break down the different categories of white space questions you may have and how you can answer them. The first of all is personal and career aspirations. A common question you might get asked is why do you want to do this particular AFP? And this is where you want to have a really specific answer and you can use something like the CAMP approach which stands for clinical, academic, management and personal. For clinical factors, it might be a tertiary hospital which receives a particular cohort of patients that you're interested in in your specialty of choice. Academically, you want to talk about specific research opportunities or research courses that you can participate in, as well as any particular departments or collaborative work that you're interested in. For management, you want to talk about any leadership or educational opportunities such as teaching university medical students, and personal reasons are probably less important in this case, but you can always mention it as an additional factor. You also want to talk about any specific skills you're hoping to gain from this particular AFP post or deanery. Some units may ask you what makes you a good candidate for the Academic Foundation program. In this case, you want to mention only your best achievements and very briefly cover why they fulfil all the aspects of being a good academic such as following the CanMeds model. You probably don't want to go into too much detail in this case and save it for other questions which ask for specific examples for research experience or educational leadership. Some deaneries may also ask you about your career aspirations and how an academic foundation program post is going to help you get there. For this, you want to cover your clinical interests and how you have shown commitment to specialty via, for example, research projects or specific clinical time that you spent or an educational program that you have set up on the topic. You also want to show your understanding of the academic path Way. so being an AFP, then an ACF, then an ACL, then a clinician scientist, then a professor, which I've covered in my last video on what the academic pathway is. And finally, you really want to stress how this particular AFP post at this particular deanery is going to help you get there. Do they have a particular research department that covers your area of interest with national links? Do they provide unique opportunities for you to develop as a medical educator? You want to do all of this research beforehand and try and build that into your answers. Next, almost unavoidably, most deaneries will ask you about your academic experiences. Usually this comes in the form of a question asking you to discuss your research experiences in general 
or a research project that you have done in detail. Essentially, you want to briefly outline the number and the different types of research that you have done. Then, you should probably pick the most impressive one to really elaborate on. For questions on research, you really want to stress your role that you had on this particular project. So, did you design and write the protocol for the study? Did you participate in data collection? If you did any data analysis, what statistical methods did you use and what software did you use to achieve it? And finally, were you involved in writing up the report for publication? Ideally, you would choose a research project that has significant output in either publications or presentations. You can also talk about any awards or grants you have received in relation to your research work as it demonstrates that you are a very resourceful academic. You can also talk about any collaborative research work which is very important in today's climate and also any audits or QI projects that demonstrates your understanding of clinical governance. If you're not yet a final year medical student but is interested in the academic pathway and don't know where to start, I've also made other videos on how to get involved in research and how to get involved in an audit as a medical student, which you can check out in my channel. In some deaneries, they might also ask you to describe a project that you want to undertake. In this case, you want to demonstrate your understanding of research methodology and your appreciation for evidence-based medicine. It is also a chance for you to demonstrate an interest in a particular specialty of choice and understanding of any contemporary issues in medicine. I would try and keep an eye on what research topics are trending in your specialty of choice and try and develop a project around that. Make sure you describe what your research question is, the type of study that you want to do, how you are going to collect and analyse data, and what you can do to reduce bias in the study. In terms of education and leadership white space questions, this can be medical or non-medical, although I do think that if you have a medically related answer, then that is better. For education white space questions, you want to demonstrate your understanding of the education theory, such as pedagogy. And for leadership questions, you want to demonstrate what you understand about being a leader, i.e. leading and directing a team to achieve a goal, and being a manager where you develop people and uses resources available to you to establish a goal. In these types of white space questions, you want to demonstrate the transferable skills you have at hand, including time management, communication skills, working effectively with others, working under stress, and most importantly, reflection and development. And again, through your answers, you should also be demonstrating your commitment to your clinical specialty, commitment to education and leadership, and to learning and personal development. In particular, for medical education, you want to demonstrate that through your teaching events, you have collected feedback and you have reflected on this and improved on your teaching for another event or next time. If you are asked to describe a situation where you have demonstrated education or leadership skills, you can use something called the STAR approach, which stands for Situation, Task, Action, Result and Reflection. Essentially, you want to describe the context of the problem, what you did and why did you do it, what result did you achieve? And finally, what did you learn and what can you apply to future projects? And finally, you might also get white space questions asking you to describe non-academic achievements. The key thing to remember here is that it has to be non-academic. Even if you did a really impressive thing in a medical school society, it will not count for any points if you describe it in this section. I always think of these questions as an opportunity to show some individuality and humanize yourself in a sea of candidates who will all have had some type of research experience, some type of teaching experience, and some type of leadership experience. You want to pick something that demonstrates multiple key skills, and crucially, explicitly state how these skills will benefit you in academic medicine, whether that's in research, education, leadership, communication, or dedication. So now let's go through a good and bad example of a white space question answer. Firstly, here's an example of a strong answer. Feel free to pause the video so you can read this for yourself before we go through it. So first of all, as we talked about with the sandwich approach, we have an opening sentence. Whilst I've been involved in a number of extracurricular activities, the most significant achievement I had relates to my passion for music. I then describe what I did, so I have two performance diplomas in violin and piano, I maintained a high level of playing alongside my studies, and then I talked about how I was a concertmaster at the Metropolitan Youth Orchestra, I liaised with the conductor and other section leaders, and I was in charge of sectionals practised. I identified players' strengths and weaknesses and made individualised comments. Then I described exactly what transferable skills are relevant in this scenario, which I'm going to now highlight in green. So I talk about personal discipline and perseverance. I talk about optimising time management and prioritisation skills. I mention transferable skills in leadership, communication and teaching, which is backed up by all of the evidence highlighted in yellow. And I explicitly stated using teaching methods to back up my role. And finally, and perhaps most crucially, 
identify that these are key skills required for an academic trainee. This really explicitly makes the connection between a non-academic and seemingly completely unrelated achievement to the relevance in medicine. For this particular white space question, I also mentioned that I replicated this same teaching method for medical school and for the National Vascular Trainees Association, thereby again making the whole application flow and again demonstrating that skills I've learned from being a concert master is actually directly impacting my other education and leadership roles in medicine. And finally, to finish off the sandwich structure, I then state that I believe my discipline, organized and dedicated nature have set me in good stead to achieve the key clinical competencies to excel as an academic foundation trainee. Again, pushing home that this is relevant to an AFP post. Now let's have a look at a not so strong answer. And again, feel free to pause the video so that you can read this through on your own before I go through it. So actually you can see that both of these answers actually have a similar content in terms of what I'm describing. I play violin and piano, I have performance diplomas, I was a concert master, I was a leader in my section, I worked with the conductor and liaised with other section leaders, I was a team player, we worked well together, helped individual players to improve their skills. However, hopefully you've identified that this answer is very descriptive and it doesn't really explicitly state the transferable skills that I'm gaining from this particular experience. Sure, I mentioned words like I'm a good leader, I'm a good team player, and I'm a good teacher, Teacher, but I don't really go into the skills that actually supports this claim. And more importantly, there are no sentences in this entire paragraph that directly links this particular experience to any medical roles or in fact to academic medicine. Hopefully you can see that both of these answers actually contain the same content. However, the specifics mentioned within the strong answer makes it much more effective to demonstrating your transferable skills that are directly applicable to the AFP. One of the most frequently asked questions that I get in white space question and I'm sure is in everyone's minds is, what do I write if I don't have any experience in this particular area? So the key thing to remember here is that they are actually looking for your potential to further develop your skills as a good researcher, a good educator and a good leader. While it is obviously preferable to already have some experience already, it is still possible to score well by just demonstrating the skills that you can bring to the table. You can think about mentioning any academic courses that you've attended that covers any research methodological skills educational theories or leadership skills. The good news is that there's usually plenty of these floating around that you can do online even just a month before the actual interviews. You also want to think about transferable skills to mention. So if you've done collaborative research in a team, you can talk about your team working and leadership skills there. And some final tips to end the video. Of course, there's no one set way to write white space questions. What we talked about here today is just what I have found helpful when I was writing my application and you might find that your structure is a little different and that is absolutely fine. When trying to write your white space question answers, I would also try and make them connect to each other to make the application flow. Whilst the white space questions are written individually, it would be good if you write them in a way so that they are easy to read in one go so that it forms a cohesive application. This means things like not using the same achievement for more than once, or building on previous answers to bring multiple white space questions together. Your application assessors is likely to read all of your white space questions in one go, so if they link together and flow together well, that will work better in your favour. Tip 3 is to remember that you might not be able to fit your entire CV in and that is completely fine. As long as you get the most impressive achievements across and demonstrate your potential to be a good AFP candidate, that is all you need to score well. And finally, I cannot emphasise how important it is to get feedback. You should email your CV and your white space questions to your peers, to other AFP candidates, to your seniors and anyone who will help you, especially academics. Just having a second pair of eyes will help loads in terms of writing your application so that it flows well to the reader. You might also find that others will have noticed some qualities or characteristics about you that you might not have mentioned otherwise. And that wraps up this video. I hope this has been helpful for those of you who are intending to apply to the AFP. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments section below and I'll try to get back to them as soon as I can. I will also be making more videos about preparing for the AFP interview, so do remember to like and subscribe so you get notified when they come out. That's it for now and see you in the next video.